and welcome to a special edition of World Insight for the Spring Festival. I'm Tian Wei. Today, the eve of the traditional Chinese festival, a big day for all Chinese and two billion people around the world who celebrate the Lunar New Year. Throughout thousands of years of history, the Spring Festival is a time to appreciate a bumper harvest, to pray for a good year ahead, to worship gods and ancestors, and to renew family ties. Setting off fireworks, hanging red lanterns, putting up New Year couplets, enjoying live performances, giving and receiving red envelopes. The Spring Festival is also a time to showcase the rich traditions in different cultures. According to the Chinese lunar calendar, this year is the year of the tiger, which is one of the 12 zodiac animals. Although many tiger subspecies are in danger now and in urgent need of protection since long ago, the tiger is addressed, though, as the king of the forest. It always has a vivid image in literature, in paintings, handicrafts, and other artistic mediums in different civilizations. People, especially the ancient Chinese, drew inspiration from this powerful animal in nature. Now less than two hours to the first day of the tiger year, let's talk about the tiger. Beautiful, powerful, and graceful. The world's largest cat species. Though now fighting for their survival, tigers are legendary in many cultures. Honored in the Chinese lunar calendar, the Year of the Tiger is celebrated with some 2 billion people worldwide. World Insight brings you a series of special programs with our best wishes for you and your loved ones. Wish you it is a great year of the tiger. Good health, great charm, as competitive and brave as tigers. Together, we can. So it's tiger, the Chinese character. Very good, David. You are pretty good with the strokes. Yeah. Hola, yo, yo, thank you. Wow, this is uh, nice. It's garlic, huh? <laughs> it looks like garlic, but it's not, right? I give you bad breath. Look out, <laughs> David. <laughs> It's a lot to chew. <laughs> this janya, it sticks to your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are chewing the, what is it, the Beijing snack? Guangdong uh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very typical Beijing thing, mm. especially for this season. All you need is to taste it. Yeah. Well, we are chewing on that. <laughs> a, a, a tiger is already born here. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, and yes. it's a very special one. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. David, you your calligraphy is see. improving very fast. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank yeah, you. I haven't I'm seen you for two years. I'm at the third grade level. <laughs> third grade level. Very nice. Grade yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's better that we can hunt them yeah. over yeah. here. Yeah. So we create a, a wall of yeah. good fortune. Okay. How about that? Yeah.
I know you've been doing a lot of practice of calligraphy, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the character Tiger. Well, like a lot of characters, uh, originally uh, the oracle, oracle bones, mm -hmm. right? These are the, the characters that they carved on the turtle shells or the ox uh, backbones, you know. And so they were very stylized pictures, basically. And if you look at the, uh, the, the character that you yes. wrote, right, this or the oracle bone character, the jaguar, right, then it actually looks like a tiger, sort of exactly. standing up, and it's got the claws yeah. there. And then and these sort of strokes that go down like that are supposed yeah. to be the stripes of the tiger, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, as years go by, the, the script changes. It becomes simplified. Sometimes things get turned around. Yeah. Sometimes strokes get left out. And you gradually get something that still kind of looks like a tiger in a way if you squint. Uh, but the, you know, it's still, if you can see the progression from the oracle bones to the present time, there's still a tiger there mm -hmm. lurking in the characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful evolution. Right. It's a, it's a more of a stylization, mm -hmm. right? Talking about the aesthetics behind the calligraphy, there's also a lot of those in the Chinese paintings, of course. Yeah. Uh, and there are many tiger paintings. There's a very famous garden called uh, Wang Shiyuan, the garden of master of uh, fishing nets. There's one section that has a very small exhibition, mm -hmm. but that exhibition relates to a very special period of history of this garden. Mm -hmm. During the early 1930s, there's a very famous Chinese painter whose name is Zhang Shanzi. Uh, he has a very famous younger brother, which is Zhang Da Qian. Uh, so it's a very the famous, master. The master, exactly. So Zhang Shanzi, uh, in order to learn the painting, uh, how to paint a tiger, he actually raised tiger. Really? In that garden. <laughs> it was quite amazing to me. Uh, I can't really believe that. So he uh, raised the, the, the tiger in the garden, and he studied the tiger, feed the tiger, uh, of course, learn how to, you know, paint the tiger. Mm -hmm. So he became a very famous painter. I think painting. It's, it's very important to feed the tiger, <laughs> because if you don't, you will become a tiger's meal, right? right? And, unfortunately, <laughs> he managed to paint before that happened, before that happened. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but but he, he painted a lot of tigers, yeah. and, and there are so many different styles that certainly express his feelings through those paintings. Yes. At one time, the, uh, the Japanese bombed the uh, Chongqing heavily, and uh, uh, there were about 10,000 people in a bomb shelter and they were all killed uh, during one bombing. So Zhang Shanzu was furious, so he decided to you know, paint a tiger painting to show his anger. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also make, made a note on that painting says, uh, row the tigers to show that you know, how the Chinese people are getting angry and we are ready to fight for our own freedom and independence. Mm -hmm. So he later, together with his brother, they started a touring exhibition of their paintings. And they're also selling at the same time mm -hmm. to raise money for China's war mm -hmm. against the Japanese. He arrived in New York, uh, I think in late 1939, early 1940. So he met uh, General Chanel. And uh, he learned that General Chanel is trying to assemble a team of volunteer pilots, American pilots, to come to China to fight the Japanese. Known as the Flying Tigers. Yes. That's actually, I think, how they got the name Flying Tigers, because mm -hmm. he made a painting of two tigers for General Chanel, uh, mm -hmm. gave him as a gift. Mm. These two tigers has wings. I wow. see. That's so where the Flying where Tiger comes come from. Tigers yes, come yes. From. So you can see two tigers coming down from the sky. <laughs> uh, Horizon is actually uh, the high-rise uh, skyscrapers of New York. Oh, so that's, that's very interesting. interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And we also learned, of course, later how those American pilots during the Second World War helped China. Yeah. They devoted their lives. That's right. Uh, General Chanel became a legend in China, right, of course. Right. That's right. Things about one culture usually could uh, uh, transcend borders mm. and get across to another culture. So in, in Chinese culture, you, we know the tiger is a, sim is a symbol of, you know, aggression and resol resolve and, you know, success and ferocity and all these sorts of things, you know. But it, it, it has good and bad connotations, you know. Sometimes it can, you know, they're, they're, they're idioms like qi hu nan xia, you know, and it's a, if you know, tiger is something to be afraid. Right. Yeah, right, right. right. Mm. Uh, but, the, but, you know, the tiger has always been thought of as you know, a, a kind of a role model, a positive figure for success. And even you'll notice, speaking of Chinese characters, mm -hmm. the tiger famously has 
the character for king yeah. on the, for, on on the, the forehead, forehead though, right? Yeah. right? I don't know why maybe God did that as a joke <laughs> or something, I'm not sure, but the tigers have this... No, character. he did it seriously. Seriously, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. I, I heard of a, a possible explanation about why they have this um, well, king yeah. thing on there. Uh, tiger used to be a guardian uh, that right. uh, escort the Yu uh, Huang Dadi, the god of heaven. And uh, at one time there were some terrible beasts, you know, demons uh, in the human world. One of them is uh, a lion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is a horse. I don't know why it's horse. One of them is a bear. So he killed three of them to award his uh, achievement. Uh, the God of Heaven gave him the three oh, horizontal oh, stroke. Oh, and uh, before he was trying to return to heaven, there was one more beast arising from the water. But, but he managed to get rid of that beast as well. So he was awarded the fourth stroke. <laughs> that makes ah, ah. complete the king. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. And, and the story also goes that uh, he was considered a protector of the world. Yeah. So the God of Heaven said, OK, you just uh, stay there. Since you have already got rid of the line, now you will be there. <laughs> so that's why China has tigers, no lines. <laughs> yeah. That's possible. Uh, uh, At times, particularly during the festival times, we want to believe in all of these stories because they are really reflections of uh, you know, sweet emotions uh, um, and, and, and about uh, our roots in culture. You know, talking about this, uh, there are a lot of artists, folk artists that are doing, you know, tiger related uh, artworks, uh, painting. And, and just the other day, I also went to another hutong in Beijing and tried to do the clay figures mm. with one of those folk artists who tried to uh, save these intangible cultural heritage, like making clay tigers. This is kind of difficult, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the many cultural heritage you try to preserve. Yes, uh, this particular intangible cultural heritage is uh, clay tiger. Uh -huh. It is originated from Shandong province yeah. back in Qing Dynasty. That is uh, 260 years ago. Mm -hmm. And apart from this, we also have uh, Chinese kite, uh, and hairy monkey, which is a very traditional Beijing intangible cultural heritage. Uh -huh. And this is very special, right? It's like two parts put together by a very thin layer of leather. So actually, this uh, clay figure could sing. Listen. <coughs> oh! <laughs> Oops! And yours. <coughs> oh! <laughs> so, so it's a different tune. Yes, uh, we call it Roaring Tiger. Yes, indeed. So that's where it comes from. And Tiger is so much loved in China. Many wonder why is that? Yes, uh, because in Chinese culture, the figure of tiger represents mighty power. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can resist those evil forces. Mm. So <laughs> in China, maybe for a newly born baby, the best gift might be a pair of shoes with a figure of tiger on it. Oh, just like those, right? Yes. Cute. The kids would really love this. Uh, yes, they love it very much because uh, uh, in our small courtyard museum, they can, they can not only learn the knowledge of intangible cultural heritage, uh -huh. but they can also learn to master those skills like painting and how to make a kite. Mm. It's a little bit difficult, but it is uh, very fun. Absolutely fun. Uh, international students and visitors also come here? Yes, uh, because we are located in Tianmen area. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, uh, tourists from overseas. So when they come to visit Hutong, mm -hmm. they just uh, stay in our museum and try to learn those uh, very interesting Chinese culture. I could spend the whole day here. There's another folk art. Yes, 
This is wood engraving Chinese New Year painting. So on it, we have a little tiger when the wood carving is covered by the red paint, I can put a piece rice of paper. rice paper on top of it and then use this to smooth it up and yes. to let this show the color, right? Yes. All right, let's see how it works. So, I could almost see the tiger is coming out. And you can also use your hand. Use my hand to smooth yes. it up. Okay. okay. Give it more strength. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think All it's right. okay. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> let's see you work. Let's see. The final. <laughs> wow. wow. Look Bravo. at that. A very good. Very one. nice. Very nice. So let's wish everybody a great year of the tiger. Yes, a very prosperous year of tiger. Okay, 给大家拜年. 给大家拜年. Tiger has been the heroine of so many artworks in China and beyond. Mm -hmm. A tiger, tiger burning bright. The William Blake poem, that's mm. right, yeah. He, he talks about a fearful symmetry because the tiger has such a striking uh, face with the, with the 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 Wang character, the, the King character, also yeah. everything you know, very very symmetrical. You know, the, the tiger has the, some of the same connotations as as China, fierce, aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, you know, there are, there are folk tales of people who fight the tiger, just as in Chinese, you have Wu Song Da Hu. Yeah. Uh, how many how many Peking operas or how many plays or how many movies have been made out of that? Yeah. The same thing with in the West. There's all sorts of stories of you know brave people go to the yeah, mountain and yeah. fight the tiger, but then the tiger also can have a friendly side in cartoons. And you know one of the breakfast cereals that I that I, <laughs> I ate when I was a little kid was uh, I think it was Kellogg's Frosted Flakes and the. The logo there was Tony the Tiger. Yeah, exactly. The friendly, sweet tiger. And, and he said, they're great. <laughs> so, I, so I grew up thinking, oh, tigers are so cute. Right, they're right. so friendly. Yeah. And in cultures in Asia, there are a lot of talks about tiger. Yeah, in a way, the Asian roots are there. Yeah, tigers are used on seals, country seals, the, the official uh, the seal of the nation. You know, they have, will have tigers and sometimes lions, right? Um, Life of Pi, I think, was very definitely sort of has an Indian kind of relationship because the tiger is, is so important. Mm -hmm. But I think there's, because the tiger is so associated with aggression and power, it's always got this dual nature, right? It's a protector. I mean, that you have the little kids even wear uh, tiger uh, uh, sh sh boots or yes. shoes when they're really little shoes. shoes. And, the, and the idea is a tiger hat. Hands. And hats, yes. right. Okay. Then the tiger is, protects the little yeah. children, right? Yeah. But then on the other hand, it has this yin-yang kind of nature where it's a, a, protect, a strong protector, but it's, it's also a fierce, terrifying exactly. enemy. And, and the, these two, the tension between the two happen in both cultures. Yeah. You know, a lot of things in the tradition that really help us to think even further of what we are facing today. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a, uh, we had a talk here for a small group of foreign friends who want to learn about the culture of tiger. Mm. Uh, so uh, one thing I started uh, talking about is the name of our hutong. So our hutong is called Zhong Lao hutong. Uh, but it doesn't mean uh, middle and old. Mm. Instead, original name of this area is called a Lao Hutong. Basically means tiger cave. Oh, so now I'm already in the middle of the tiger cave, right? <laughs> Got two tigers now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, please continue. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the Hutong later developed, so developed into East Tiger Cave, uh, Middle Tiger Cave, and West Tiger Cave. Yeah. And uh, with the Hutong um, following. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, the whole name, it became too long. So Zhong Lao Hu Dong Hu Tong. Uh, so we Beijingers tends to omit when we <laughs> find it too troublesome to pronounce it. Right. So Zhong Lao Hu Dong Hu Tong sounds very tongue twister like it is. kind of it's thing. Nice, yeah. So later it became Zhong Lao Hu Tong. I wonder, you know, when it comes to traditional culture, yeah. how do you see what is going on in China? There seems to be apparent revival of traditional culture. I, I learned English as my major, so uh, 
I was truly uh, inspired by my foreign friends on how to approach my own culture uh, with a different perspective. Mm. And when I do that, I, I found, you know, this is really interesting. I kind of find my own identity. So after that, I started to do cultural preservation. Mm. And about eight years ago, I started this courtyard institute. So I think that uh, the tradition is not just uh, about uh, art. It's not just about history. It's also about philosophy. Mm. So it's very comprehensive. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I think more and more people are coming to our courtyard, mm. and uh, especially younger children. So that's very touching. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was teaching a group of kids, uh, and um, we actually walked the entire southern bit of the central access. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that central access line is applying for world heritage status. And uh, after a whole day, almost a whole day of walking, from 9.30 to 3.30, so that, that, that's about six hours, mm -hmm. uh, constant walking. And, uh, and they returned here, and uh, I started to give them some recap of what we have done and uh, give them the history of you know, how Beijing Old Town has been developed. And uh, they were all listening for about another half an hour. Mm -hmm. Nobody is dozing, nobody is uh, just trying to play with their own toys. It's very encouraging. encouraging huh? It's hard to get their attention span, but certainly they put their hearts into what they told you. Yes, and uh, what I told them are very serious mm -hmm. culture and history stuff. Not yeah. I, I, of course, I try to make it fun, but you know, some of the knowledge or history yeah. are just boring terms that they have to remember. You know, also uh, talking about the tradition, the traditions are not traditions per se. Mm -hmm. They are traditions grown out of a rich culture. But look at now, we have a pandemic going on. So a lot of people would not be able to go back home, in fact. It is something very different what they're experiencing now. This is certainly a very challenging time yeah. and a hard time. Mm. So wh what about tradition that could help us to you know, crawl out of this difficult time and be able to look at the light at the end of the tunnel? I think culture gives us this kind of resilience, uh, just like you said. And uh, culture is something that uh, uh, gives us confidence, gives us a a faith about our future. We don't have to worry. When we have an anchor, we, you know, we don't uh, really puzzle. We don't really just uh, getting crazy about things. And I resonate with a lot of what Matthew said. I mean, I can speak for my own culture, but I, I do go back to books, to poetry, and especially, you know, if you look at Chinese poems, look at the poem, the most famous Chinese poem, at least overseas, by Li Bai. Mm -hmm about the moon. Yeah. Okay. So in English, it, it would be, uh, the moonlight beside my bed, t bedside at night reminds me of the frost on, on my uh, hometown. Mm -hmm. I look up to the moon, and then I look down and think of, of my family, my hometown, right? Well, that moon is still there. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. And, uh, in, a, in times like these, when we're separate, we can't be together, right? There's still that poem, there's still the moon, there's yeah. still the artwork. Those are such deep, deep truths, and they're ways of getting beyond that. And, and, and as you said, people have gone through these hard times before, but there's yeah. always the moon, and we're always together with tradition. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think there is, we go back to the tradition because it makes us reset ourselves and yeah. realize that this is not the end of the world, things will go exactly. on. Exactly, yeah. Powerful and graceful. The world's largest cat species. Though now fighting for their survival, tigers are legendary in many cultures. Honored in the Chinese lunar calendar, the Year of the Tiger is celebrated with some two billion people worldwide. World Insight brings you a series of special programs with our best wishes for you and your loved ones. Wish you it is a great year of the tiger. Good health, great charm, as competitive and brave as tigers. Together, we can. So we are almost at the end of today's program. So it's always the best time to bring our best wishes for our beloved ones and to our friends. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Matthew, who do you want to 
express your love to? Well, uh, my wife is actually uh, has the zodiac, zodiac sign of tiger, so I oh. would like oh. to wish her oh. uh, wow. the best of luck <laughs> for her year. <laughs> Uh, That's wonderful. Yes. Did she have the you know the red, little red uh, string? Yeah, I think I will get her maybe a pair of red socks. Uh -huh. <laughs> David, what about for you? You have family here in China. That's right. I have in-laws. In-laws in here in China. Yes. Very important. Yes, and they said, "Oh, you're such a good husband. Uh, you know, even without your wife, you would go home <laughs> to see her." <laughs> and I said, "Yes, I, it's okay. I love it. We we get drunk, and it's great." <laughs> right? But this, but this year, for because of uh, to be sec extra safe, they said, no, don't, no, don't come home, mm. don't come home. Because they're safe. of senior age. Huh? Yeah, they're yeah. they're they're in their 80s, and but the other family said, no, just we'll celebrate separately, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now my 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 other fa my biological family is in the United States. Yeah. My my wife, my daughter, my brother, my sister, and of course I look, I I read the news and go, oh my God, you know, I just worry about them, you know, so much. Uh, and we've missed two Christmases now, right. where we haven't been able to be together. But I'll tell you something, this is one of those things, you know, something bad happens, but some good comes of it. And because we couldn't be together for Christmas, actually my, my brother, my sister, my daughter, my wife, we've developed a habit of, of, of getting in touch every week by either telephone or by social media or by WeChat or something. Right. And especially my brother and sister, we've actually talked more and shared our experiences and mm -hmm. talked more about family mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. be, during this pandemic time yeah, yeah, yeah. than we did earlier when we do our own things. We say, oh, I'll see him at Christmas anyway. Yeah. Now we think more, more about it and so we actually share our opinions more on social media. So that's a, that's a, oh, that's a How long have you been doing that? For two years. Two years already. Mm -hmm. If it's in my family, a lot of fights already happening <laughs> online. <laughs> I don't know whether that's true for you. We hope it is a year of uh, health, uh, prosperity, and great family reunions eventually. Yeah, some really long-awaited family reunions. <laughs> <laughs> so let's bye-nian to everybody. 新春快乐, 虎年大吉!